Hello and welcome to the fifth episode in this series. This time I want to show you how to achieve a horizontal scrolling title consisting of three text elements. Each element will scroll in turn onto the screen from the left, pause briefly in the centre, then exit the screen on the right. This is how it looks. This may be a simple animation, but it's quite tricky to get right. This is because the text strings will invariably be of different lengths, and to get the animation looking right, there's some experimentation required with the keyframe parameters. I'll deal with two different ways of achieving the end result. I've no doubt that there'll be other ways, but I'll leave those for someone else to deliver. In both methods, I'll be using the position keyframe controller in the titles and text media properties to achieve the animation. Both methods have their advantages and disadvantages, but method 2 is easier to create than method 1. Method 1 consists of just one active element, the titles and text event. This event has the required title text strings in a line with a number of spaces between the strings. There are a number of factors which will determine the number of spaces required. These include the length of the title, the font size and the length of each text string. How long the text string should remain in the pause state and how fast the animation should be is determined by the placement of the keyframes. Method 2 consists of a number of active elements. This number depends upon how many text strings will be in the title. My title has three text strings and the positional keyframes of each event will work together to achieve the synchronized scrolling and pausing of each of the three strings. To save some time, I've made a note of the parameters to aid me in the tutorial. Also, please note that parameter values and keyframe positions are for the PAL Full HD system. Let's get started. For this first method I need three tracks. On the third track I have my title clip. And on the first track I need to bring down a titles and text media event. I need this event to be 13 seconds. Now I'll just pull that out to the loop point. I need this font to be Times New Roman. And I need the size to be 20. I need the cursor at the beginning of the event. And I need the anchor point to be center right. Now the first string in my case will be 29th August 2019. This will be the last string to appear on the title. I'll now type 20 spaces. type in my next string. In this case it's Northumberland. Now this string font size needs to be 24. Now 
Now after this font size needs to be 36. And I need to type in a further 14 spaces. And now for the final string, which is Cragside. And I need that. Hmm, I don't think that those spaces were changed. No. I have to change those to 36. and change the font to manually. Okay, now to change the font color to yellow and give it a black outline. With a width of four. I'm just checking the spaces because crag side there on the preview doesn't seem to be in the centre. But we'll see. Change the anchor point back to centre. And enable location animation with the animate button. At the start of the event, X should be minus one. And Y should be 0.18. I need to move the cursor 25 frames, which is one second for me. And add a keyframe. I'll now change the X coordinate to minus 0.25. Now I need that text string to stay on the screen for three seconds. So I'll move the cursor three seconds and add a keyframe. And now move it to further 25 frames.
and add a keyframe. At that point the X coordinate should be 0.52. Move the cursor 3 seconds for the pause and add a keyframe. Then move it to further 25 frames. We'll just click it there because that's the second mark. Not quite. And add a keyframe. At that point the X coordinate should be 1.26. Now you can see we have a little bit of a problem there which I'll have to sort out. Move a further three seconds. And add a keyframe. Then move a further 25 frames. Now I need to come back if I don't want to put a keyframe right at the end of the event and add a keyframe and at that point the X coordinate should be 1.99. I need to check the animation now. Oh no, that's okay. That's worked okay. Right now you can see that the animation is a bit jerky at the end. It's not a smooth animation. It doesn't slow down smoothly. So to correct that or to make that a little bit better at the start of each animation I need to change the fade type. So if I click on the first keyframe, location keyframe, right click on it and select fast fade. And on each keyframe that starts an animation, You can see how the curve has changed so that now if I repeat the animation the strings don't stop as abruptly as they did before. See if I can get that to play a little bit smoother. Right, it's already on half. Now obviously a point to remember about this is that all the coordinates that I've shown and the timings only apply for this example title. You'll have to do some experimentation to get your title looking correct. 
I'll just close that down. Lastly, I need to create the text background. Uh, this will be a semi-transparent black rectangle, just big enough for the longest text string. I'll go to the color gradient selection. Pull that down onto track two. second fade at either end. And I've previously made a preset for this one. You can see it's a standard preset with parameters changed. I'll just go through these parameter options so you can see That's point one. You can see the parameters there. And that is the crosshair. And you can see the control point parameters. And we just go to the parameter two, which is this one. And what that does is it puts a nice semi-transparent background on the text. I'll just play that through again. Okay, that's method one, which involves quite a bit of working out size of spaces, etc. Method two needs three extra tracks. Again, I've got my title clip on the fifth track. I'll bring a titles and text event onto the first track. Let me just move this along a bit. Change the length again to 13 seconds. Pull that out to the loop point. I'll just duplicate this twice. Now I'm going to mute tracks two and three so that I can work on this in isolation. The 
first text string needs to be, in my case, Cragside. And again, I need this to be manually. And change the font size to 36. Now the animation for this event, make sure that the cursor is at the beginning of the event. Then I'll activate the keyframe controller for the location. I'll change the anchor point this time to bottom center. And then change the location coordinate for this one to minus 0.23 and 0.05. Move the cursor one second. and add a keyframe. Now the X coordinate for this one needs to be 0.5 and we'll leave the Y coordinate at 0.05. I now need to move three seconds which is the pause duration and add a keyframe. Then another one second and add a keyframe. At this point, the X coordinate needs to be 1.23. Now, as before, I need to make the animation go smoother as it stops. So I need to go to the first keyframe and click Fast Fade. This completes the animation for the first string. I'll unmute the second track and open up the properties. Now the second string, in my case, needs to be Northumberland. And I'll change the font to Times New Roman. and the font size to 24. Again, the color needs to be yellow. With a black outline. A width for now for the animation, I'll activate the location animation again with the cursor at the beginning of the event. I'll first change the anchor point to 
bottom center again and the x coordinate needs to be minus 0.23 And the y coordinate needs to be 0.08. Now then a little tip. If I go back to the media properties on string 1. In the keyframe controller if I left click and drag across the keyframes you'll see that the diamonds have got slightly bigger which means they're, they've been selected. Now if I right click on one of the diamonds and select copy be careful you don't click off them because that will deselect them now this copy function will copy all the keyframes and their relational position with each other. So I now can close that down and go to the next string and I know that string 1 starts to exit at the 4 second mark so that's when I want string 2 to start entering. So I've going to set the cursor at the 4 second mark. And now add a keyframe. If I right click on that keyframe now. And select paste. That will paste all the keyframes. In the right position. Or the right relative position but because the font's different on the second string to the first string I need to change some parameters. If I go to the each keyframe with 0.05 in I need to change that to 0.08 Double check those. Oh, that didn't get it. I didn't press return. After changing these coordinates, you need to press return. to check the animation. Oops, gone too far back. Okay, that seems to be okay. Now to unmute this one. And do a similar thing. Now this string in my case needs to be 29th August.
times New Roman. I need to set this font size to be a little bit smaller than the previous one. Again, the color will be yellow. Now for the animation. I'll change the anchor point again to bottom center. And at this point, the X coordinate needs to be minus 0.23. And the Y coordinate needs to be 0 0.08. Now again, I can go back to the media properties on string two. Highlight the keyframe set. Copy. Now I know that string two starts to exit at the eight second mark. So that's when I want string three to start entering. So I'll set the cursor at the eight second mark. And add a keyframe. Right click on that keyframe. And select paste. doesn't seem right there so we'll have to see what happens yes that's definitely not right what's wrong. First coordinates should be minus 0.23 and 0 0.08. That looks better. I'll just try that. Okay. I'll just close that down. Now the text background is identical to the one in method one, so I'll just copy that. Okay, there we go. As you've seen, that's a fair bit of work involved in creating this title. But I think it's elegant and effective, so I think it's worth it. Join me, if you can, for the next tutorial in this series, when I'll be creating another elegant animated title. 
Until then, bye for now.